is my pleasure to welcome back to VLGA Connect and for the first time in 2021, the CEO of the Victorian Planning Authority, Stuart Mosley. Stuart, great to see you. Thanks for the opportunity, Chris. Good to see you again. Always great to have you here. And I know 2021 is off to a big start for you, albeit in a different way than any any other year. You would have been delighted to see so many people at your virtual stakeholder events with the minister a few weeks back. Indeed, it was a bit of an experiment for us. Um, but apart from proving that the minister is a big draw card, it also reminded us how many people uh, are deeply interested in the work we do and, and want to talk about the issues we're tackling. And we got a, uh, you know, a good a good overview of, of some of the current concerns from key people in the various sectors we deal with. So it was it was. Um, very worthwhile and we're thinking about how we can do more like that. So as I understand it, he launched your business plan for 2020-21, which was delayed for obvious reasons, but you've been working towards that plan for a little while, I gather. We have, yes. And um, there aren't uh, any surprises in it really, because uh, about this time last year, we swung um, almost all of our resources onto what we called the Fast Track program, which really was accelerating uh, a group of about 18 projects that were already well advanced on our business plan. And that that's continues to consume the majority of our resources. But the business plan did contain um, a teaser, if you like, about the next projects that we would like to bring on, as well as uh, an intention to work up a, a future pipeline, um, or, or rather evaluate whether we can work up a future pipeline in the major regional cities that are experiencing so much COVID driven pressure at the moment and in activity centres or higher order activity centres in established Melbourne. Um, so those are some forward looking pieces as well as, you know, keeping our heads down and working hard on the projects we've got. Perhaps just a bit about the fast track program, Stuart, before we get off that. Is that the work that came out of or the list of projects that came out of that special task force that the government appointed going back uh, earlier in COVID? No, no, those were pre-existing projects. Right. Essentially what we did about this time last year was look at our, our workbook and say, well, what could we accelerate with the goal of bringing land to market for development in the economic recovery phase? And because most of our projects are complex and long-lived, um, Fast track really, really is more probably more accurately put as faster track. We, right. we're, um, we accept that the issues we deal with aren't always ones that you can resolve quickly, but you, you can always resolve them more quickly if you swing resources, um, government agency support uh, and planning pathways behind them. So the minister set up a standing advisory committee for us and to split stream that. We've, we've also got uh, an interdepartmental committee that coordinates government agencies around the table on those projects. Uh, and we communicated with our council stakeholders that we would like to accelerate the work. And, and in large part, that was um, received with, with support and cooperation, which, which has been uh, you know, a, good, a good way to work in partnership. Just what, remind us that task force, what was the impact of that on your work? So um, I suppose there was a, a short-term impact in that we seconded one of our executive directors over to head up the task force in its initial phases. So that was Alex Rhodes. Uh, and our board chair, of course, was um, co-chair of, of that task force. But the recommendations of the task force, uh, will, you, you will start to see if you're not already in some of the structures that DELP is setting up to triage and then stream priority projects through the planning system. And some of those will come to us, but there'll also be others that are dealt with by ministerial call-in or other processes. Um, in Duke, and then of course, um, we are expecting this year uh, a planning reform agenda um, under the auspices of Minister Wynne and the Treasurer. And I think we can expect to see the thinking of that task force find its way into some of those reform options that will be discussed in due course. Thank you, thank you for clarifying that for me. The big housing build, how does that impact on what you're trying to do? The planning system's role in delivering that is primarily being coordinated through DELP, but we are working on a number of precinct planning projects with significant Homes Victoria interest. And that's the VPA's point of difference. You know, Our role in life is to structure plan and rezone designated areas. Um, so a couple of those that, that 
the members of your sector would be particularly interested in. Uh, one is at Braybrook, where Homes Victoria, ourselves and the Maribyrnong Council are working together to see whether we can regenerate, construct a planning framework that can regenerate um, that, that suburb, Braybrook, which has a high concentration of public housing assets. And the big housing build will be part of the stimulus for that area. And um, we're also evaluating a couple of other options for similar exercises. And probably the other big one um, that we're working forward on is Arden and what role Homes Victoria might take in, in that precinct. So to answer that question, there are connections, but yeah, our particular piece of that pie is in helping deliver precinct planning frameworks that open up opportunities for the big housing build. Stu, in terms of the way you engage with the local government sector, and given that there have been recently council elections, how are you finding getting uh, to, I guess, uh, the messaging through on projects that have been underway for some time when you've got new leadership in place in some of those council areas? Yes, look, I think it's fair to say that that, that challenge has been complicated by the COVID year, and we probably haven't put as much time into that as we would have liked. Uh, on, in some cases, we have been in front of the new elected bodies. In fact, I was at Maribyrnong last night, as fate would have it. But it, uh, it's only now really that we're starting to get back to those face-to-face -face, uh, interactions that, that I think everyone would find much richer than on-screen interactions. But uh, as a substitute or, or in addition, we, we obviously value and work very hard at our relationships with councils at the administrative level. So we certainly have maintained the close contact we have with um, uh, CEOs, planning directors and, and project managers on all of our projects. But I guess this is a good opportunity for me, you know, anyone uh, who is watching this, uh, who, who is an elected official and has a VPA project in their council area. If, uh, if you don't think you've got enough information from us, please uh, invite us and we will happily come along, obviously through your staff. But um, yeah, I think we're keen now that things are opening up again, uh, particularly in the regions, I think. Um, it's been good in a way to have on-screen interactions with our regional local government and government colleagues, but uh, we, we think we'd like to start getting out and about a bit more. Good, good to hear. Um, before we started recording, we were commenting on how the city itself is just feeling like it's starting to come to life and you've got people back in the office, Stuart, as of uh, the last couple of weeks. Yes, I think the big challenge for all organisations this year, everyone who aspires to be an employer of choice, will be to really hold on to new ways of working, work from anywhere. I think we went into COVID with pick a number, would it have been 15%? It certainly was in the VPA of people who worked from home. Our surveys tell us now 80% um, of our staff want to be working from home uh, for at least one day a week. Um, not many of them, in fact, I think virtually none of them want to be at home all week. Everyone sees that there is a value in getting face to face, but uh, we are genuinely in a new way of working and we need to, as all organisations do, really make sure we capture the benefits of that in terms of investing in the right technology, having the right understandings around uh, why one would come to an office and why you don't need to, and supporting people to work in a way that, that suits them. Before we let you go, Stuart, anything else about the year ahead that you'd like to highlight to the local government sector? Probably just uh, to, you know, I think every, most people would see that the Victorian comedy, comedy, economy, <laughs> is uh, sometimes it was a comedy, wasn't it, last year? But uh, the Victorian economy is, is, is really firing up again. And in terms of the work we do, um, Greenfield's Melbourne land consumption is very strong. Um, 2020 saw virtually double the number of allotments sold than 2019. So, you know, just think about that. In a COVID year, sales mm -hmm. doubled compared to the year before. So the, the pressure to keep delivering land for homes and jobs in Greenfields, Melbourne is still with us with all the challenges that brings. And we also acknowledge that the regional cities close to Melbourne, Ballarat, Bendigo, Geelong, and many of the peri-urban towns, you know, Bacchus Marsh, Warrigal, Druin, um, Kyneton are also experiencing a lot of growth pressure because people are now less coupled to their jobs and their job locations. So I think that puts the pressure on on the local government sector and the state government uh, urban planning fraternity, principally and including the VPA, 
to really think about where and how we can unlock land to create the communities and opportunities those people are looking for in a way that is consistent with the aspirations of the existing community and protects local character. But um, there isn't any sense in which, uh, whilst the CBD has, has been hit hard, um, all of our indicators tell us that growth you know, in most other places continues to be a really important issue to tackle. Interesting and a good note to finish on. I think, Stuart, thank you for being so generous with your time as always. Best of luck for the year ahead and uh, hope to keep in touch. Thank you, Chris. Always welcome the opportunity and look forward to 2021. Stuart Mosley, CEO of the VPA with us on VLGA. Community.